Hi, welcome back to Wisecat. So, uh, right now I am in the Weblish terminal and I've just finished actually setting up a server, building a server. Now I haven't done anything more on it, I just went and got myself a glass of water. Um, but let's continue. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually set up an SSH so we've got something that actually behaves a bit more properly than this thing with all this... Uh, D message stuff coming up on the, the command line that okay I guess that's uh, what happens uh, so anyway uh, what we're going to need to do is dodge these messages a little bit I mean I could just UFW disable but yeah okay for a while I'm working it so that uh, I mean this is not really a uh, disable you probably wouldn't actually want to do that. <laughs> Stopping the firewall is not really recommended. Um, but this is a throwaway server that I'm probably going to delete before this YouTube video even goes out. Uh, so, why not? Okay, so we're going to do that. Ooh, and I'm really big, aren't I? I'm going to shrink. That's better. Okay, so let's set up a SSH, um, enabling SSH and make sure that the uh, we can actually log in via SSH so that we can say goodbye to uh, Weblish. So for this, we're going to actually need a couple of things. And one that we're going to need is our friendly uh, desktop terminal. Now, the desktop terminal and how to actually SSH in can be different depending on your computer, your OS. Right? I'm currently using Linux and I'm using this uh, terminal um, program, which is just a, a Linux terminal. Um, some people sometimes ask me why I use Linux. Perhaps the number one reason I use Linux is because Linux has the terminal that is really easy to use to SSH into servers. That's probably my the number one thing I like about it is the terminal. Now, Windows users, you have a thing called PowerShell now. Um, back in the old days, the old CMD prompt apparently was not gonna work for SSHing into things. But, uh, and so a lot of people used something called PuTTY, I think it was big P, little U, T, T, Y. Um, so PuTTY was the thing that people used to use on Windows, but nowadays you can just use PowerShell. Now, PowerShell, I, as I understand it, the way to tell the difference between that and standard command line is that PowerShell is blue. Make out of that what you want. I don't use Windows, so I don't really know what I'm talking about in that respect, so I'm going to leave it at that because that's as far as I know. If somebody else really does know, um, if you can use uh, PowerShell well uh, for SSHing into service, please um, uh, command you know below comments section. That would be cool. Uh, on Mac, there's inside utilities, there is a place called Terminal. There's an actual program called Terminal, and it brings up something just like this. Um, why don't I use Mac? Don't feel like it. Um, so anyway, uh, I <laughs> in Linux, we've got these uh, these terminals, and they exist, and they're, they're convenient. So what we need, um, well, what we're going to want, first of all, though, is we're going to want a... Uh, SSH key to be generated. All right, so SSH, we want to use keys rather than using passwords because first of all, using keys is more secure and second of all, it's easier. So let's do that. So the simple command, the simplest and easiest way to make a key is just like this, one command, SSH dash key gen. Now here's the point. We're doing this on my local machine. I'm still Adam at Mammoth. Mammoth is the name of my desktop, and because it's kind of mammoth in size, it's it's a massive box. So SSH key gen. Right. I hit enter on that. It says, where do you want to save it? And it by default, it's going to put it in my home directory under Adam, home slash Adam slash dot uh, SSH slash ID RSA. By the way, this will work on PowerShell as well. Uh, I'm going to say, well, slash home, yeah. Um, actually, no, I'm going to put this in my RAM disk. 
Uh, no, I'll, I'll just put it in home slash Adam slash dot SSH slash, and I'm going to give this one a different name though. Mm, different. <laughs> okay. Different. And I'm going to, um, yeah, just hit enter on that. It'll ask you for a passphrase. If you really are secure, paranoid, think enter a passphrase. I don't really care for one. Um, my home directory and everything's encrypted, so no one's finding it anyway. And also, the, the other cool thing about keys is that keys can be transferred to other machines and they can be revoked. They, the permissions can be destroyed later, so it's, it's good stuff. And you can rekey. So now I've got um, two files it's going to say. Your identification... Um, whoops. Oh, I just grabbed... Oh, okay. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at the wrong monitor and they're, they're both showing the same basic stuff. So, oops. Lots of bloopers today. Great. I'm just going to leave them in. Your identification has been saved in uh, this place. Different, right? And your public key has been sh saved in different.pub. Uh, this is not a different pub as in a different pub you go to to get another beer. This is different.publickey. Now, the thing is that there is public key and there is private key. Private key, you should never tell anyone. And I mean anyone. I mean, if you have someone call you up and say that your server's at risk, can you please tell me what your public key... No. Never, never, never. In fact, that's one of the things that I got a little bit uh, mad about it. Some people, a friend of mine a couple of years ago, had a bit of a tiff because he saved his public key, his private key to a USB stick and he lost the USB stick. So um, don't do that. Uh, don't let it off your machine and keep it, you know, if they have this file, they can get in to anything. All right. So anyway, I'm going to show you this file because I'm not actually going to use it. All right. Well, I might use it for just this one. Well, no, I won't use it. I'm not going to use it for this one. I'm going to use a different one. Yeah. Okay, fine. Anyway, uh, cat, this one. So never, ever show this file because this one is the one that should never, ever get out. So now that I've given you out this one, this uh, um, private key is essentially useless and should be destroyed immediately without... I'm not going to, I'm going to destroy it after I've finished making the video. But the, the point I'm trying to stress is that the word private here, really heed the word private. It is private. Never, ever, ever let it out. Public key, on the other hand, that you can give to anyone. All right. So the private key, the way that you can tell is that it will say at the top, for example, begin, open SSH, private key. It will tell you that this is the beginning and that's the end of the private key. If you ever see beginning of private key, end of private key, you're looking at something that you should never see. Right? So that's how you tell the difference. What does the public key look like? Well, it's the same thing, dot pub, right? That's what the public key looks like. And the public key is just... Um, Adam at Mammoth. Yep, yeah, that's at the end. There is actually saying who owns this key. It's not actually really part of the key, but it's, you know, so you can sort of change that if you don't like it. But this other part is the cryptographic handshake. This public key goes with this private key. So if uh, I tell the server, I have this public key, um, use this public key to authenticate. Well, this public key can only be satisfied by someone who has the private key um, because cryptography. Uh, so I, that's a whole other topic. Um, <laughs> by all means, uh, asymmetric encryption, Google it. Um, I'm not gonna even try to explain that in a short YouTube video because it won't work. But anyway, the, the important thing is you've got a private key that um, you can use to uh, access a server if the server knows your public key. 
So the next thing is to get the server to know this public key. Now there are a couple of different ways we can do this, but the first and simplest way uh, is to come back here. Now if we come to the root SSH access for root here, SSH root at 172 blah blah blah. We've also got this option here. Um, you know, it, Linode makes it easy for you. It gives you a place to just copy it. And so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come here and I can SSH in here. Oh, whoa. Well, that was weird. Anyway, this is the command that I would use. So I'm currently Adam at Mammoth and I want to become root at the IP address of the new server because that's the new server. That's it. The hot fun server is at IP address that. Right, so that's what I want to be, root at this, which will be localhost. Right, so if I hit enter now, it's going to ask me, um, do you, you know, this computer doesn't recognize that. You just type yes here for the first time you log in. Every time after that, it will check to make sure that the, lo the server you're trying to log into is actually who they say they are. So that's useful. Then it asks me for the password. What was it? Kangaroo uh, six one seven hash hash hash. I think it was. Yeah, and that's a stupid password. I would never use such a password. But anyway, there we are. Root at localhost. It has changed. And now, uh, if I actually go back to the glitch, glitch, glitchy here, glitchy, 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 glitchy. There it is. All right. Uh, there's glitch. And there is uh, root at localhost. You can see it's the same uh, thing is written there. There's root at localhost down there. And there's root at localhost down here. If I type, say, ls, uh, no. So uh, if I just say uh, nano uh, hello dot text, right? And put some of them hello world. Oops, why not? I'll save that and exit. And now I've just created a, a whoop. I've created a file called hello.txt and it has as its content hello.world. If I come over here and ls, um, I can see hello.txt. Actually, I didn't need the list view, but anyway, ls hello.txt, it's the same in both. You can see I'm in the same location. When I'm at root at localhost, I'm at root at localhost. Uh, so um, the next thing I can do is I can just log out of that one now because I do not need that anymore. And so I've logged out of it and I can just close that window. Because now I there's nothing I can't do from here. But didn't... Wait a minute, Adam. Didn't you just say before you would never have to use the password again. Well, that's where SSHing alone, not ideal, but SSH dash copy dash ID allows you to copy your ID and using the command is better than actually doing it manually, but you can copy the ID into um, the SSH uh, directory of the root user of the server. If I do that, I can then do kangaroo 617 hash 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 cha cha cha. And that is now copied the key across, keys across. And it actually added two so because I've got two keys now on this computer. I'll delete the other one later. Anyway, um, I don't need to have two keys at the moment on this computer because I like a simple life. But what that has done is that's actually copied this, for example, different.pub. It's copied that to the new machine, right? So to the new server. So that's this is one of the things that you might want to also copy here, copy this from our uh, textbook here. A copy from here so that what we can do is in Linode when we go to say create Linode 
Um, you remember you can add an SSH key here. You can paste that in there and uh, not I learn. Wait, what do I mean? Um, different. That's what I called it. So why not? Uh, so now I have the ability when I make a new server, I can always just say, yeah, just add that key from the get go. And then I never have to worry about passwords to get into the server again. Um, it is a good idea though to keep having your root password be um, properly determined. Anyway, not going to do that right now, but hot fun server, it's there. Uh, and if I go back to my, my terminal, this is in there. So now the thing that's great about that is that now when I go back to SSH into that server, I'm adamant mammoth, I SSH root at uh, 172.104.77 blah 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 and it just got me straight in. No password required at all. And the ironic thing is that this is more secure. This is more secure than using a password. Right? Unless you throw out the... Um, <laughs> if you... Uh, it actually stores these in uh, dot SSH. Uh, it stores them in this file dot SSH slash authorized keys. And if you let your pub private key out, then you can, you know, anyone who has that private key will have the pub, the corresponding public key is in this authorized keys file. And that's how the authentication happens. So that's, it's bad if you have in there, um, things like that. Okay. It's not good to, not good to have the private, private key get out. Definitely don't ever tell anyone the private key, public key, don't care. Anyone can have the public key. doesn't matter. Okay. So that's, um, part two on how you actually get to, uh, this, um, this command prompt here. So actually, yeah, now that we're in here properly, if I go back to UFW enable and re-enable that, it's gonna say this time, command may disrupt existing SSH connections. Proceed with operation, yes or no? Sure, yes. And now I've got my, um, my firewall is active and enabled on site, startup. So UFW status. 2222 is limited. Okay, um, there are a few other things to do for hardening the server and making the server stronger against uh, things, uh, stronger against attack. One of the first things to do would be to change 22 to a different port number because when the robots see port 22, they know, oh, port 22, that's, well, that's that's U UF that that's SSH, so yeah, that there's I can SSH into there. Um, yeah, and so they'll try. So if I look at D message and see all these messages that came up before, uh, there's a really good chance that I'm going to find some that will say DPT destination port is um so that one's you know they're looking for ways in and dpt equals you know 22 is if it hasn't already happened it's it's coming because attacks on ssh they just kind of happen a bit um a lot of others too but anyway anyway uh that's pretty much it that's the SSH side of things. Uh, might continue on uh, later, maybe at another date anyway. And I'll give you another video that um, shows you what the next step would be, which I guess would be um, getting the Moodle code and everything like that and setting it up. I might do that in another video, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. But anyway, I'm going to get these two videos up so that you can... Uh, see how to set up one of these. Okay, talk to you next time.